Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke, and this is the part where I talk about the softer side of IT. In this environment, what we're dealing with is we have to understand the nature of operations, right? By understanding operations, you really have to understand what it means to learn when it comes to learning things like Comigen, Docker, coding, GitHub, and so on and so on. Now, with that being said, let me give you some advice. When you start the process of doing this, and you make the decision how you're going to do this, understand the nature of what you're going to do first. You know, it's really great that you can start doing this, right? But once you get the hardware in place, and you've got some capacity, and you've got some testing models, and now you can start to deploy things like Docker and Comigen, and so on, and you can start bringing in your software code into your centralized platform where you can start using all your tools to begin the process of learning how to do CICD, that's continuous integration and continuous distribution services, i.e. by uh, development and by continuous non-interruptive updates to your system environments for your coding. Now, what does this really mean? That sounded really technical, didn't it? The truth of the matter, it's very simple. The reality of the fact is, you can't get something off the ground until you first learn how to use it, right? You are dealing with probably 2,800 different variables just with Docker. And to know what it takes to get Docker off the ground successfully, repetitively, and that you're doing all the crossing of the T's and dotting the I's in the process, you need to first make sure you separate the differences between your learning processes and really developing a, okay, I want to do it right the first time approach. Now, once you've got an idea of how your tools will work, don't overcomplicate it. Just do a couple. Now, secondly, you need to then research the nature of what we call, very important detail, called operations. What is operations? Operations is basically all of the key things that need to allow your tool to function as it's supposed to, including the functions of internet access, security patching, backups, and so on. What do you mean backups and internet connectivity and security patching and so on? Well, when something goes wrong and you messed up your code and your server's broke, if you didn't do a backup, <laughs> Well, you're starting over. Wipe it clean, start over. But if you learn the right disciplines up front, like number one, before you ever do any Docker experimentation to an application level, there are three layers. Remember, there's the core operating system environment. That's the command kernel level. Then you have your services level, like Apache. Well, no, correction, I stand correct. PHP is an excellent example of that. Uh, then you have the application. It could be Tomcat. It could be um, a web service of any kind you like, uh, uh, including Apache and so on. The key detail is when you're doing your kernel and you build your services, you make a backup. You also make sure that your security templates are good, your security scans are done, and you do the basics, the one, two, threes. Because you don't want to build a product and then discover, oh crap, I've got vulnerabilities. And that was all caused two levels below my application. So that's operations. We do the things, the due diligences that are necessary to allow you to first be able to build out something. Secondly, that it's secure and fully compliant. And thirdly, that if anything happened, not a big problem. We took a snapshot before you did the code adjustments. We can just simply revert the snapshot back and it's back to the way it was. 10 minutes and you've recovered, opposed to hours and hours and hours of work. So operations is very important to your model then you can go into the tools that you want to work with. I don't care if you're a guy in the lab or a girl in a lab playing around and having some fun to learn how to use these tools to kind of make things a little easier, right? Uh, or you are a professional who is trying to augment and, and troubleshoot and test some new ideas, new theories, and so on. The key detail here is to make sure that you've got your core operational basics in play. Up here is a five node Proxmox core platform. Now this could be AWS, 
This could be Google, GCP. It could be anything out there. And down here, I've got about 40 terabytes of capacity. And they're in a shared state that's made available to the platform. And way down here, I have a TrueNAS platform providing many, many more terabytes of storage capacity. So the, the goal here is I have an environment, right? I have the capacity. Now, when I start to use these guys, I have to go through a set of disciplinary steps to make sure that every component is one, two, three, done. One, two, three, done. One, two, three, done. And over and over and over. This ranges from naming conventions to the disciplines of your, your virtual private connection interfaces for all of your individual sessions that which you may have out there. And of course, how your, your remote storage and your localized storage are secured so that they're only functioning for the things you need them to do. So with that being said, the truth of the matter is as you're developing all of this out here and you're making your instances, and as you can see here, I have quite a few out here and I'm still not saturating in my environment. The data center is actually doing pretty doggone good. I'm impressed with its ability to do what I need it to do and its healths and its states and it's able to do quite a bit in regards to reaching out to its resources and functioning and just doing all the things I want to do. Now in here you also have Scythe, you also can do ZFS, you can do other things, but every time you bring one of these to the equation, remember that you need to make sure you're doing the basics. And the basics are, when you're working with these systems, are you actually doing all the one, two, threes you need to do? And you're walking through these processes to make sure that they are correct and that they're authentic. Hang on a second here while I re-log in. Okay, now we're seeing the correct information. I was just logged in way too long that time. Even that can be a security risk, so you want to make sure that you're setting your your security authorizations to eventually time out so that you can request for new authentications and things don't uh, get out of control. So, But as you can see here, my nodes are not getting saturated, but I have instances all over the place, and they are running. And that's good because overall... The cluster is healthy. Now that I've got my core developed and deployed and I have my backup strategies in play and I'm able to confirm that I'm in good shape and that I have taken my time and my backups are in play, now I can start screwing around with the instances, adding new things, and I don't like them, then I can just simply restore them back and this is an excellent, very critical function that you need to do. Every time you decide that you're going to do an update on your system, your instance system, you need to make sure that you are taking the necessary steps to perform a snapshot. It doesn't take long at all. And it completes it pretty quickly. Uh, then you can go up to your script job that you want to do, like a bash job, and place that into a queue. It's approved, of course, because you've got to learn the approving process of doing uh, the deployments and continuous integration processes, which I'll cover later. And the inevitable goal is that it executes those updates and you are operational. Now, here is where you would build your Docker instance, right? You would come out here and you'd create an instance, let's say Ubuntu or CentOS, whatever your favorite Linux is. And then you install the Docker software on top of that, and now you're ready. But you got to give that that uh, Docker resource some some internal resources for it to do what you want to do, because you can only run maybe one or two instances off of it. But you can have many instances; you're just only able to run one or two. So something to think about. You also find out that Docker is much, much, much lower in, in CPU and RAM resources than that of a VM instance like you see here. So with that being said, you have the ability of learning what it means to build yourself an operations. The operations is really basically three steps applied to each level of a clustered environment or a deployment environment. One, is your system secure internally, externally, and by, by services. Two, internet connectivity. Is it correctly set? Is it properly MTU'd? And is it secure? 
your storage resources. If they're local, are they secure? If they're remote, are they secure? And access to it, is it secure? CPU processing. Plan to have more than you need, but always unprovisioned, because if you unprovision, you have space to grow. RAM capacity. VRAM is not the same thing as real RAM. Understand that because when you start to look at the multipliers and you start building your VMs and you ask yourself, why am I not seeing all of this RAM being used? Virtual RAM is really what's being created and it's basically what we call a thin provision RAM allocation. Remember that. It can get out of control quickly if you don't monitor it, but it's really beneficial because it gives you a lot of breathing space. And lastly, your operating environments. Make sure that you keep them up to date. One. Now, two, make sure you keep them up to date at the service level. And three, make sure you keep them up to date at the OS level. They're all very important. Vulnerabilities, security, and operational functionality for compatibility. The three biggies. Lastly, build yourself first a primary backup job process that happens, let's say, once a week. That primary job will set a retention policy of, let's say, 60 days. So within 60 days, that backup job will disintegrate. It will just go away, fade away. And then you can put in your system every other day an incremental snapshot. An incremental means anything that happened between the last full backup and the next full backup, I'll capture in the incremental backup. And so if you had to do a restore, you would restore all the incrementals back to the full backup and you're ready to go. But the good news is it's fast, it's very small, and it doesn't have much overhead at all. Do your backups. Have a full and have an incremental or a full and a differential. Or you can do journal logging snapshots, which will go for like one complete full and 30 days of journaling. Uh, they all work. But they only work if you took the time to actually set them up. And that's what most people don't do. That leads me to my last part. Very important part. And you should write this down. Write everything down in a process. We call them standard operating procedures. Walk your steps through. Set them up into a narrative where you can walk through them every time you deploy a new instance or a new platform. Why? Because you're going to forget. And you're going to miss a step and you're going to miss this and you're going to miss that and it is a process and when you get into the habit of making sure that you thoroughly document how you deploy these things it's incredibly easy to go and find what mistake you made and you missed a that or you didn't run a script correctly or something like that or you should have done x when you did y and that's important and what i mean by that is the things that mess up devops is when operations doesn't work well, or isn't seamless to DevOps, where it's right there to support everything it needs at the moment it needs it. Because with Dev operations or DevOps, we're constantly integrating, that's CI slash CD, constant development and distribution. I like to put the D on the end of that because we're distributing continuously new updates. So those are very important details to know. And if I have a hiccup, I need operations. So before you start doing something, learn your stuff first. Trip up, mess up, do everything you want. But don't consider it your production system. Once you're ready to do production, write down your operations. What do you expect out of your operations? If your operations include homegrown blade environments like this, or really crazy stuff like I'm doing, where I'm just really having some fun, just tinkering around and building systems that I can get to do what I need. Or you're hardcore, and you've got your environment set up, and you've got you know, maybe a hundred processors, multiple terabytes, and you want to build an emulation model of what you're looking for. With that being said, understanding the nature of your operations is always the very first step. Once you finally learn how to use the tools you want to work with. So I promise you I would do this kind of stuff. Um, mix it between software and how do you plan things out versus um, physical hardware. 
and I, you know, I'm doing one on, one off, and so on and so on. So, with that being said, I'm hoping that you guys are going to be able to uh, enjoy these. Um, these are the basic steps that teach you how to build from nothing into something. And you know what? Your operations may be just for you and for your very specialized deployment. That's okay because that means you become smarter. So learn your tools first. Screw up all you want. Then build your environment. Then build your operations. Then bring your tools in at the end to start plugging into operations correctly. Those are your steps in planning. This is Brad Dyke. I'm going to let you guys go. God bless and have a great week. Take care.